Um, Mark, thank you so much for joining us. So do you want to tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. Um, so my name is Mark and I run the School of Communication Arts uh, in Brixton and online. And we are the world's most awarded ad school. We teach people how to think, how to find and solve problems in order to start a glorious creative career, usually in an agency, not always, but usually in an agency. So yeah, my role is I, I run the school. I, I try and find amazing students to work with and amazing mentors for them to learn from. And I put a chaotic course together for them to experience. Fantastic. It sounds very exciting. Um, if that doesn't make people want to join SEO, I don't know what will. <laughs> yeah. um, so tell us about your background, because you haven't always worked in the education space, have you? No, I came to this school as a uh, what pizza. I'm being asked what pizza I want by one of my... Uh, Pete, I went to this school with Hello. in 1993. We both came to this school. Oh, and, um, and, and I won a scholarship here, and it was the only school that I was not expelled from. Um, so some schools I've managed to be expelled from more than once, but this school I thrived at and I was the scholarship boy and it saved my life, it changed my life. I, I came from fair privilege, you know, I'm white, I'm male, I'm middle class, my dad was a lawyer, um, you know, so I came from opportunity and privilege, but I didn't take advantage of those at, at a younger age. Also, my dad got arrested when I was 19, 20 years old. And um, and so at 2021, which is, I came to this school at 20 years old, um, yeah, my life wasn't really worked out, plotted out. All I knew was I like to think a little bit and have silly ideas, and I needed focus and mentoring and guidance. Anyway, I came to this school, um, as I say, 93, left in 94. Nelson Mandela was about to get elected in South Africa as I was leaving the school. And because I was the scholarship boy at a very famous ad school, I had job offers all around the world. So I had lots of offers in London, but I also had an offer from a great agency in Singapore. And it was a lot of money because it was tax free and I was 21 and whatever. But I had a job offer in Johannesburg in South Africa and Mandela was about to get elected. And, um, and it was a great opportunity to watch a new country being born and the end of apartheid um, and the start of I, we hoped fairness and, and and everything else. Anyway, I got fired by the agency. My ads were too rude. Um, so I got fired and hired and fired and 21 years old. And um, cut a long story very quickly. I started an agency in South Africa at 21, 22 years old. Um, and that got me into technology. So I, I had my first sort of entrepreneurial creative idea in South Africa for an American telecoms client. And at 21, 22, 22, I became a millionaire for the first time um, using the tools that, that I had, that Pete and I and others have been taught at this school, how to find and solve a problem and how to sell that problem, how to sell the solution. So I did that for a few years in South Africa. Um, I left South Africa in 97 to start my first proper dot-com um, because the dot-com boom was just starting to happen. And um, and I sold that business to Sir Martin Sorrell and Lord Tim Bell about two and a half years later for about 20 million pounds. Um, so I'm now on a roll. Um, um, rather than writing ads, which is what I was taught to do at this school, I was, or classically taught to do at this school, I was using what I was taught at this school to have more commercial ideas rather than make commercials, if you see what I mean. Anyway, I did that for a while. I did that until 2007. And um, I had a lovely sort of portfolio of technology that I really wanted to sell to Motorola and Motorola really wanted to buy off me and it was we all really wanted it. it was really what we all wanted but my investors wouldn't let me sell I hadn't I didn't have control of my company and they felt that I could still add a zero before I exit they wanted more money and so I wasn't allowed to sell and um and I realized I wasn't in control of my creative destiny and and I didn't take that very well. And so I walked away from that business and I walked away from business. The idea of making other people money um, no longer became attractive to me. And I didn't like what I had become either. I was no longer attractive to me either. And when I came to the school in 93, the man that ran it, that taught Pete and I, bought a pizza, um, 
we were taught by John. John had Parkinson's disease when he opened the school and he would get ill as he was running the school. And he was so ill when we left and the school closed when we left and he died a couple of years later. And so um, I spoke to Pete and a few other of my classmates and a few famous people that, that, that our teacher had taught. And we agreed to reopen the school. And I reopened the school in 2010 with a big scholarship focus. So half our students get scholarships uh, funded by the industry. Um, and that is a way of yeah, saying thank you to the old school um, for everything that it gave me and us um, and try to keep some of that, um, some of those values of SCA, original SCA going. Long answer to your question, sorry. No, oh my God, there's so much there. I absolutely love that. I mean, the different stages of your career have been absolutely fascinating. There's something to learn from like every single stage. If we go back to the beginning, so obviously the young people watching, they are at school. They might resonate with your message that you were saying before about how you were expelled from multiple schools and there was only one school that took you or that yeah. worked for you. Yeah. What advice would you give? Because you are living proof that you don't have to get all the best grades in the world in order to be successful. You can actually be phenomenally successful if you go against the grain. What's your advice to kids who um, resonate with that message? I think the first thing you've got to do is find yourself. And it's really hard to lose yourself in a classic secondary education where you're expected to perform to a type that the um, systems are asking you to perform to. And if that's not you, um, either you might pretend it's you, in which case you lose yourself, or you literally hide, you don't turn up, I didn't turn up, or I, I found trouble that, that would preoccupy me or whatever. Um, so the most important thing we can do is find ourselves and be ourselves. And um, and that can be hard in school. And if it's hard in school, the sooner we can, we should try and find a way to find ourselves outside of school and then bring that person into the school. You know, bring that bring that character and, and her strengths or his strengths, the the things that 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 make that person shine. Um, rather than thinking about the weaknesses, I wasn't particularly academic, but looking back, it's probably a bit of my ADHD and and, and a few other spectrumy type things that um uh, that perhaps I hadn't acknowledged or, or weren't identified and I wasn't perhaps properly supported if 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 whatever. Um uh, but but once um once you're in your element, if you're in a, in a space where, you know, having short term attention and wanting to jump from one thing to another and um in a in a more in a more nurturing environment that allows you to be yourself, um, well then you want to be you more. And the more you want to be you, the better you are at being you, and the more authentic you are at being you. And and then you discover, as 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 Dr. Seuss said, that you got to be you because no one else can be you, and no one else can be you better than you. Um, you can do you better than anybody's ever going to do you. And so if you just keep that in mind and just make sure every day um, you're being true to yourself and you're being true to your promise to yourself to be a better version of you tomorrow than you were yesterday if those and that's an easy those that, that's an easy thing be yourself you know who you are might take a bit of support but once you find yourself don't lose yourself don't don't go up your own ass or anything I'm allowed to um, so be absolutely solid with who you are and then every day make it your goal all i've got to do is be one margin point better tomorrow than i was yesterday all i've got to do is is know one or two more things today that I didn't know yesterday or be slightly further along with developing good practices, good habits, you know, one extra day of good habits, all of that stuff. After a year, you got 365 days of good habits. And believe me, nobody leaving secondary school has taught that stuff. You teach that stuff yourself. You, you teach that stuff yourself. And, um, and I'm really, really privileged that, that through my life, I've enjoyed having good friendships with, incredibly successful people from all walks of life because um and, and what that's what i see in all successful people is they found themselves they're true to themselves um and they've developed good habits I love if you don't that. get caught at school i love that that's amazing because that is something that someone at any age can really start implementing in their own lives learning something yeah. new a couple of things and learning more about yourself that is a journey best started as early as possible um Okay, so in the last couple of minutes that we have, can you tell us a bit more about SCA? Um, what subjects do you teach? All of that kind of stuff. And also tell us about the scholarship scheme because there's a lot of kids out there probably watching this who would be very interested to know about that. Yeah, okay. So um, we we have a weird way of teaching. 
Um, and um, what we do is we don't have a classroom and we don't have subjects um, um, because that's a very sort of, let's say that's a very secondary school, industrial factory model of learning, right? And, um, and we want to be a bit more fluid than that. So rather that, you can think of what we're going to do is, is help each, each of our students write their own book portfolio that represents their creativity and commercial creativity to help them get a job as a um, as a creative, um, usually in an agency, but not always in an agency. To do that, we're going to break the course down into three stages. The first stage, we're going to learn who we are, how to think, how to find and solve problems. The second stage, we're going to learn what failure tastes like. We're going to learn what it's like to be told that we we think we're being told that really we're being told that our ideas are not right and then we got to work out how to build up the resilience to hear the difference between the two and to get up off the canvas and go again because again the most successful people i know they got knocked down onto the floor 12 times and they got up 13 times and so we learned that in term two so term one we learn who we are who we're with how to think how to find solve problems term two we learn why we're no good at it we learn what failure tastes like. Thanks, Kate. Term three, uh, uh, we learn how to make it right. We learn how to write our book, how to to show our story. So that's what the course is. It's a twelve month course in our studio or on, online, but preferably in in Brixton. But we've got a great online reputation too. Followed by six months of paid placements, um, paid at London Living Wage. So twelve months in my studio, six months of London Living Wage paid placements um, with our partners, with our sponsors. Those sponsors help fund scholarships and about half our students get scholarships. Most of our scholarships we distribute through pipeline partners, diversity inclusivity pipeline partners. For example, Brixton Finishing School or Commercial Break or Ideas Foundation or DNAD. Um, we use these partners to help find talent before they're SCA ready. So, for example, if I'm going to give out about 20 scholarships in September, I think about five to 10 will go through Brixton Finishing School, for example. Those are uh, what we call means-based scholarships. We provide those scholarships through partners that are about promoting d in the in the in the industry. We also have what we call merit-based scholarships, so means and merit. Merit are won through competitions. And so they're, um, they're about saying, look, you might not have come from a background that is all about you know where where Brooks and Finishing School are you know Brooks and Finishing School want to want to address some of the social injustice and, and imbalance in our industry. Beautiful, they're very important. But there might be somebody that's at I don't know Central St Martins or Glasgow Fine Art or Bergs or somewhere like this. They also need a scholarship to come to the school. Um, and for them, we have competitions, and we usually announce those competitions sort of just after Easter, and with a deadline um, um, early July with the announcements end of July, the winners end of July. Fantastic. Well, you heard it here first. Um, lots of um, people watching will be fascinated by your story and what you are now, your legacy, what you are offering the next generation. Um, it is absolutely wonderful. We love working with you guys and it's been fabulous hearing all about your story. I love the rebirth of SCA. I think that is amazing. Um, thank you so much, Mark, for all of your time. Thanks for speaking to me. Good to see you all. Take care.